Thank you, Beth, for a nice introduction and uh, for um, amazing opportunity to talk about intravascular imaging for uh, optimizing PCI. So we are going to start with the um, quick overview of lesion characterization and post-PCI assessment with intravascular ultrasound and optical coherence tomography. These are two available, currently available intravascular imaging modalities for us in the CAS lab. Uh, then we are going to look at uh, most recent uh, clinical trials on intracoronary imaging and outcomes after PCI. We'll look at patient lesion selection, and finally, we'll try to describe optimal PCI. It's a PCI which meets uh, imaging criteria for achieving best clinical outcomes. For more than 40 years, more, more than 30 years, intravascular ultrasound is um, a very important addition to uh, coronary angiography in the CAS lab. It's, um, um, Intravascular ultrasound uses reflected acoustic energy to generate high-resolution images of uh, um, the vessel wall. This is a um, healthy vessel wall with a three-layer structure, intima, media, and adventitia, very different from um, atherosclerotic lesions, which can be classified as soft, fibrous, or calcified plaque. Very important distinction for um, Real, for lesion preparation, making decision for lesion preparation. Before PCI, intravascular ultrasound can give us um, a lot of measurements, minimal lumen area, diameters, the same measurements at reference area. We can calculate plug burden. These are very important measurements for stent um, sizing and placement. Stent sizing can be based on either on lumen measurements or um, vessel size, and the ideal proximal and distal landing zones will be um, reference size with the, the smallest uh, plug burden. Minimal lumen area cutoff of four millimeter square is the cutoff to differentiate um, uh, lesions, uh, non-ischemic lesions, which, uh, for which uh, revascularization can be deferred. If uh, minimal lumen area is less than four millimeters square, FFR or non-invasive stress tests um, are required. IVOS can help make a decision if these tests are not available. Either area stenosis, high area stenosis, high plug burden, or lesion lengths more than 20 millimeters will also justify um, stenting. Minimal lumen area of six millimeters square is the cutoff for non-ischemic lesions for left main uh, disease. This is a typical post-10 quantitative measurements uh, by IVOS. Minimal stent area, reference areas, which can allow us to calculate stent expansion. We can also um, estimate um, if there is a stent um, dissection or strut position. Optical coherence tomography is more recently developed imaging modality. It, compared to IVOS, it has 10 to 20 times higher resolution, much faster pullback speed. However, tissue penetration is only five, one to three millimeters, which doesn't allow us to see media layer and, uh, at the site of the lesion, most of the lesions. And the most, different, um, most important difference is blood clearance is required by OCT, and some lesions have to be predilated before we can image them with OCT. Similar to IVOS, really structure, intimal medial adventitia, much more uh, detailed characterization for atherosclerotic lesion based on signal attenuation. Lesions can be characterized as fibrous, lipid rich, or calcified. And only OCT can give us a, a measurement for fibrous cap thickness with the cut of 60 micron for thin cap fibrous aroma. In contrast to IVUS, we can have not only calcium arc, we can also measure calcium area and thickness, very important measurement for um, intervention. OCT can characterize uh, underlying mechanisms responsible for acute coronary syndrome either as plaque rupture with a visible tear of fibrous cap and um, red thrombus, plaque erosion with no visible site of rupture and calcific nodule. It can differentiate between red and white thrombus. 
While plaque rupture is the most common underlying mechanism responsible for acute coronary syndrome, more than one third of patients arrive to the cath lab with OCT erosion, and there is enough clinical evidence to suggest that some of these patients can be stabilized without stent implantation or with medical therapy. This is a typical screen we see after uh, we run a pre-PCI OCT pullback. All these measurements um, at the minimal uh, the lesion site and reference site, all done automatically, available, they're available literally the next minute after we are, we are done with the pullback. And the quantitative measurements after stand implantation also automatic. In addition, uh, we have uh, co-registration with angiography. So any finding on OCT, we know exactly where to find on um, angiography. This is the new feature, um, which shows um, automatically malopause struts. Malopause struts in this cross-section area are shown in red color on the 3D reconstruction of the stand. And we see exactly where these struts are on angel, can go with balloon and fix this. These are typical findings of our OCT after stand implantation, malopause struts, instant dissection, thrombus, plaque protrusion, each dissection and stand under expansion. Stent thrombosis remains a persistent complication of PCI, and angio, angiography has its limitation in detecting stent thrombosis. OCT is a very um, helpful tool to, to, real, to characterize mechanism of stent thrombosis. In, a, in a recent um, retrospective studies, strand malopositions, ruptured neoatherosclerosis, and severe stent underexpansion were identified as the most um, common mechanisms. With all these unprecedented insights in the, the plug um, composition, the most important question, of course, for us is, um, does imaging improve clinical outcomes after PCI? Eight randomized trials comparing IVUS and angiography-guided uh, PCI, in, uh, only in out of eight trials, only two trials showed a significant reduction of MACE with IVUS guidance. These trials had the highest number of patients, but most importantly, they had very complicated lesions and patients. So the goal of the recent ultimate um, trial was to see if benefits of IVUS can be detected in all comers, in all patients. 1,500 patients were randomized to either IVUS or angiography-guided uh, PCI, and the primary endpoint was target vessel failure, uh, composite of cardiac death, target vessel myocardial infarction, and clinically driven um, TLR at 12 months. In the IVUS-guided um, group of the patient, optimal stent deployment was defined as following. Um, stent expansion more than um, minimal area minimal luminaria more than five millimeters square, or 90% stent expansion uh, compared to distal reference for tapered vessels, absence of major dissection affecting media and adventitia, and also no, no longer than three millimeters, and no large plug burden at the stent age, at the proximal references. These are the results. At 12 months, a target vessel failure Target vessel failure uh, was only 2.9% in IVUS guided uh, PCI, significantly lower than 5.4% in angiography guided group. And uh, I think the most impressive result is shown in this slide, which shows that only 1.6% of target vessel failure was observed in patients who had optimal PCI, while 4.4% um, MACE occurred in suboptimal PCI. These were patients who had um, underexpanded stent or large stent age dissection or plug, a large plug burden at the um, reference. When this uh, trial was combined together with eight previous trials, uh, randomized trials of IVUS guidance versus OCT guidance, um, there was significant superiority of IVUS um, was, was demonstrated in MACE, and for the first time, 
for the first time, there was a 49% reduction in uh, cardiovascular death observed in IVOS guided PCI. Compared to IVOS, optical coherence tomography doesn't have very convincing evidence for clinical benefits, and there is still no randomized trial showing benefits of OCT. This is um, the first um, retrospective study showing redu reduced MAST under OCT guidance. And these were imaging findings, we, uh, predictors of MACE in this study. Distal, large distal age dissection, minimal lumen area less than 4.5 millimeters, and also uh, significant narrowing or large plug burden in the reference. Very interesting high correlation with ultimate trial, very similar findings. In this uh, trial, doctor's trial, patients were randomized either to angiography uh, guided PCI or angiography plus OCT guided PCI, but the endpoint was um, FFR, post PCI FFR, as a surrogate point which has been shown previously to correlate with the six months follow up. In this study, OCT, guide, OCT guidance resulted in significantly higher OCT, um, FFR after stenting and there was also smaller uh, residual stenosis after in OCT-guided PCI. However, clinical implication of these findings still uh, not clear. The first randomized trial of um, Illuminant 3, where patients were randomized to OCT versus IVOS versus angiography, uh, had the primary, primary endpoint post-PCI minimal stent area, also not clinical outcomes. In this trial, stent sizing uh, was based on the measurements of external elastic membranes, similar to IVOS. It's, it was a new measurement at that time to test. Uh, the trial showed non-inferiority of OCT compared to IVOS in uh, minimal stent area. However, it didn't show any um, benefits or angiography. There was no difference in procedural or 30 days uh, outcomes. So this new approach to stent sizing was safe. And now it's been used in aluminum 4, currently ongoing trial, which is powered for uh, clinical outcomes. The aim of this trial is to demonstrate superiority of OCT guided compared to angiography guided stent implantation. In, in achieving not only a larger post-PCI lumen dimensions, but also in improving clinical outcomes. In this trial, very high number of patients, all high-risk patients with very complicated lesions are being randomized uh, either to OCT or to angiography-guided PCI, and the clinical follow-up will be available at one, two years. The trial will be probably done in a year or two, but based on the current clinical, clinical <coughs> evidence, what can we say about which patients and lesions should be considered for intravascular imaging? First of all, patients with long lesions and CTOs. I was guided PCI improves clinical outcomes, but OCT, or either OCT or IVOS can be used equally effective in, this lesion, in these patients. Patients with uh, left uh, main lesions, they should be mostly considered for image-guided interventions by IVOS. OCT can still be used in these uh, patients in non osteo left main lesions. Patients with complex lesion morphology and patients presenting with, with acute coronary syndrome. Stent thrombosis and breast stenosis. Additional indications favoring OCT, of course, include identification of mechanisms of first stent failure and patients at high risk of developing contrast-induced acute kidney. Injury, of course, can, be, can rather benefit from IVOS than OCT. The, what is the optimal PCI, uh, iris, irrespective of uh, image modality used in the lab? First of all, stand, uh, the most important measurement, minimal stand area, more than 5.5 millimeters by IVOS, 4.5 millimeters by OCT, in non-left lesions, relative stent expansion more than 80%. Malaposition distance should be uh, smaller than um, 0 0.4, 400 micron, less than one millimeter length. And what are the findings, what are the things we should try to <coughs> avoid or treat? 
first of all, residual plug burden uh, and uh, large dissections which involve medial and adventitial la la uh, layers. Image interpretation is very important part of uh, performing opti um, optimal PCI. Uh, we developed several mobile apps here in Mount Sinai Cath Lab, one of them Octade. Octade is teaching OCT. It's a free app. You can download this and try. Uh, we have uh, hundreds of images, um, live for a lot of pullbacks. These are all real life um, cases. We also have tons of quizzes. You can test your knowledge. We also work on um, IVUS 8 mobile application for intravascular ultrasound, and I hope to present this in the next, uh, next year in the next symposium. Thank you.